Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question find the prefix common array of two arrays. In this question we are given two zero indexed integer permutation a and b of length n. A prefix common array of a and b is an array c such that c of i is equal to the count of numbers that are present at or before the index i in both a and b. And we need to return this prefix common array of a and b. So in the example given we can see that the output is this and why it is so the explanation is given over here that at index of i 1 and 3 both of the values are common so the answer at this index will be 2. Don't worry we will discuss this particular example and see how this particular output gets generated. The constraints are pretty low that the length can go up to 50 for both the arrays. So now let's first see what the question is all about and how we can solve it. We'll start off with first understanding how the output gets generated. So these are the two arrays given to us A and B. And we need to have a third array which is the resultant array that we need to return. Starting from the index 0, we see that there are no common values between the two indexes and so the result at index 0 will be 0 itself. Now, taking into consideration the first two indexes. In this we see that the value 1 and 3 are both common in both the arrays and so the resultant value at index 1 will be 2 since there are two values which are common in both the arrays. Moving forward we see that we again have three values which is common so the result is 3 and at the end all the four values are common so the result is 4. So how do we find it? Let's get back to where we started from at the initial position. Now what we need to do is we are effectively trying to find out the position of every value present in the two arrays. So if we start off with this value 1 from index 0 and we try to find out the index of this one in the second array, we find that it is present at index 1. In the first array it is present at index 0. So since both the values are common starting from index 1, we can increment the value in the resultant array from this index to the last index. So we increment all the values to 1. Now we again do the same thing with the value at index 1 in the first array. We find that the value 3 is present at index 0 of the second array. So again both the values are common starting from index 1 so we increment all the values in the resultant array from index 1 till the end of the array. We do the same we find that 2 is present in both the arrays at the same index which is 2. So we increment the values from this index till the end and similarly for 4. We see that we are getting the same result using this approach as well. This is a very brute force approach but it was the first approach that came to my mind. Now it's time to code this particular approach. So we know that we would need a resultant array. Let's call this array as C. Now we know that we need to iterate over the first array and then on the second array as well. Now we need to find the index J where the value present at index I is equal. So value at index I in array A should be equals to value of index J in array B. Once we have that we need to have a flag which is found which we can turn. So over here we will have a flag for every value. Now once we are sure that we have found the value and the J value should be greater than or equals to I, we can just increment the value at Jth position and done with it. At the end we need to just return the array C. Now let's run the sample test cases. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case is O of n square while the space complexity is O of n for the resultant array that we are using. Do we really need to go through all the values that are present in this jth array? Can't we use the fact that there are some common values that we have already found till the previous index? So an optimization is possible in this particular case. 
So now we will see that. So coming back to the same problem, what we were effectively doing was at this particular index 2, we saw that both the values are equal and then we were incrementing all the values starting from this index till the end of the array. But do we need to start from the zeroth index of the second array? Can't we use the already calculated value 2 in this case and then move forward with it? Since we know that if anything is common after this point, it will be an increment to the existing result. So looking at this particular case, we see that the two values are equal. That means whatever common values were there previous to this particular index, we should just add plus one to this particular case and similarly to the next index as well. So what we're trying to do over here, we're trying to find out whether the frequency of the numbers at particular index has become two. It will be much more clear once we dry run this particular example using the second approach. So moving on, we'll have another array in this case with the frequency. It has one extra element because the values are starting from one, but the index starts from zero. To make things easier to visualize, we are neglecting the zeroth index and we'll just focus on the index one to n. So we'll start off with the zeroth index for both the values. And we see the value one and we increment the frequency of this particular value in the frequency array. Similarly, for the value three, we'll increment the frequency. None of the frequency table has a value equals to two. That means a common value is not found till now. And so we can move ahead. We again find the value three and this time the frequency at this particular index in the frequency array is two. Once it is 2, we are sure that this particular value, which is 3, is common at this point. So we'll have a count variable. And once any frequency reaches 2, we'll increment this count variable then and there. So the count is incremented to 1 now. We have another value, which is 1. We increment the value in the frequency array. We see that it is 2. So we again increment the count to. And at the end, whatever value in the count that is present should be placed in the resultant array at that particular index. So we put the value 2 at this index 1 where we were operating. Moving on to the next indexes, we see that index increments to 2 since both the values are 2 at this particular index. And since the frequency is 2, we increment the counter. Whatever value is in the counter, it signifies the common values up till that point and we place that value directly into the resultant array at that index. Moving on, we again do the same thing. The frequency gets incremented to two. We increment the counter and we place the value in the resultant array. And once we reach the end, we can return the resultant array. So this brings down the time complexity by using a trade-off of using extra space. Now I will highly recommend you to try this on your own. And if you face any issue, you can always come back to this video. Now it's time to code this particular approach. So we'll make changes in this code itself. We need to have a frequency array. Its length will be length plus one. And we need to have a count variable as well. We need not to have this code. We we'll, can remove this. So we need to increment the frequency present at this index i of array a and then check if this frequency has become equal to 2, if it is, we'll increment the count. Same needs to be done for array B. And lastly, we need to put this resultant count at index I of array C. Now this completes the coding part. Let's try to run the sample test cases. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So this got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case is O of n. Well, the space complexity is still O of n since we were already using the resultant array. That's all for today's video. I hope you like this video. Do let us know your thoughts, comments and queries in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.